Personal Statement Sergey Blumen Being born in the Second World War in Leningrad, currently St. Petersburg, I was exposed from the very beginning of my life to the mysterious influence of neoclassical architecture and regular structure of the city. Subconscious influence of medallion sculptures and wrought iron decorations, symbolism of Art Deco buildings seducing charm of the atmosphere of the turn of the century, its multifaceted associations were major influence at the beginning of my artistic development, especially noticeable in my early metal sculpture and jewelry. For more than 50 years I have been working as a professional artist in oil paintings, work on paper, mixed media collages, sculptures, metalworks and reliefs. Nonetheless, I was educated as a professional musician. For about 20 years I combined artistic and musical occupations since they both were fulfilling my professional interests. Furthermore, my long life experience in music led me during the 1980s toward the origin of a very important project, tonal paintings, described further in detail, and 20 years later toward my video compositions widely presented on YouTube, Live Journal, and The Mail. In 1965 I entered the Moscow Conservatory and in 1970 graduated from Leningrad Conservatory as a professional trumpet player with honors. I play a variety of instruments which I am using in creation of my musical and video compositions. Upon graduations, I joined the chamber orchestra of ancient and contemporary music and for 20 years played the trumpet with various ensembles including St. Petersburg Philharmonic, Kirov Opera and Ballet Theatre, and other music companies. In 1966, at the age of 18, influenced by the works of Kandinsky and Kleye, I produced my first painting using shoe polish, toothpaste and ketchup for paints. This first creation refused to dry and, to the displeasure of my conservator's roommates, for three months continued to emit a rather distinct odor at the school's dormitory. It did dry eventually and still exists in my collection today. I thoroughly pursued my interest in art alongside my musical career. In 1974 I became a member of the youth section of the Union of Artists. During the first ten years I was mostly concentrating on miniature metal sculpture from 1974 to 1978, I took part in numerous exhibitions on the city, regional and national levels by participating in many exhibitions throughout the Soviet Union, including personal one at the Summer Garden Rossi Pavilion in St. Petersburg. In 1978, I immigrated from the Soviet Union and for a year and a half lived in Europe mainly in Vienna and Florence, where I exhibited my artworks, mostly watercolors and miniature sculptures mentioned above on a regular basis. I also continued to paint, but in a real sense as a painter I evolved in the West. After my half a year sojourn in Florence, where I played three solo concertos of Torelli Concerto per Trombo in Re, with Florence Chamber Orchestra in front of Cimabue Frescos, I settled in New York in 1979 and have lived here since. Beginning 1980s, my oil paintings have been the subject of nine solo exhibitions in Italy, Austria, France, America and St. Petersburg at the Concert Hall of Mariinsky Theatre. My works are now included in the art collections of the State Russian Museum, St. Petersburg, the State Historical Museum, Moscow, the Museum of Applied Arts, Vienna, the Museum of Bucknell University, Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, and County Museum of Art, Los Angeles, California. 
my art ideas come from things that I see around me, but it's a kind of internal compulsion that forces me to paint something. There is really no way to explain it with words, but it's when seeing or feeling something becomes a necessity for me to paint that something. Any painting comes to life when somebody looks at that work of art and perceives its emotional charge. Then the painting evokes an emotional response and becomes a medium that creates an alliance among the artist, the painting, and the viewer. Metaphorically speaking, this kind of alliance gives a hypothetical refuge to metaphysical love in fantastical landscapes. Each painting preserves the artist's spiritual energy and emotions. Mostly I am attracted to primary basic human emotions such as love and joy, not to destructive ones such as anger or hatred. I strive for harmony in composing my paintings, harmony of dissonance. Painting is a process of organizing chaos, the chaos of reality, and the chaos of pigments on canvas. I believe that art, together with religion and philosophy, represent a trinity which defines and creates the spiritual reality of life. My motivation is based on the concept of the succession of art tradition. With undisputable respect over my multiple predecessors, I do believe that the mission of any contemporary artist is to develop his own breakthrough in his own search for the newest artistic discoveries. On the other hand, I realize that each artist belongs to his own time and so regardless of the scale of his personal talent, he is limited by his time's artistic, spiritual and intellectual boundaries. Since any artist is not able to go beyond those boundaries, so the mission of any successor is to broaden the art idiom of his time, and thus to uplift the perception of artists' contemporaries by overcoming limitations of previous generations, and artists expands the spiritual knowledge further and enrich spiritual language of his epoch, and contemporary art language in the process. We artists are the small particles of borderless spiritual domain. Still we do contribute to the total growth of this domain to the intellectual field of humanity, which has been developing itself through human history as well as uh, through multiple variety of schools. It is astonishing to think that we, contemporary artists, have an opportunity to contribute to this field to inherit and at the same time to bequeath the art started with a Neolithic cave drawing and developed further through the early mosaics, through Egyptian and Caustic and Pompeian frescoes, Dark Ages tomb, stone carvers, and beloved monks' lovely miniatures, grand hopes of Renaissance giants, and clarity of De La Tour and Vermeer. A Greco insanity and Rembrandt's grief for Saskia, gallant world of the 18th century, and the years produced by Carol, the abstract element of which developed later by Monticelli, Cezanne, and by many artists of the 20th century. I believe that cultural multitude indicated above shapes a sort of associative as well as psychological matrix in any contemporary artist's mind. It creates a sort of base mesh of a foundation layer to be coated by multiple new layers of which contemporary artists' individual ideas, concepts, and personal associations. In the meantime, I also believe that throughout centuries the art idiom has been developing toward abstraction. Throughout my artistic career, I have been trying to balance abstract lines and color patterns in an effort to achieve equilibrium of abstract whole and the presentational parts. I am predominantly interested in creating a figurative image from abstract elements. My goal lays in translation of reality 
into newly created sub-reality and or metaphorical images. I'm interested in defining a marginal point that filters visible objective reality through subjective interpretation without, however, turning my paintings into completely subjective things. I perceive myself as a tightrope walker walking the line in between, between abstract and representational vocabulary. I'm very interested up to which point we contemporary artists are able to spread out this method of interpretation of reality. I'm happy to participate in this development by sharing my feelings, views, and artistic principles. It is very important to me to achieve equilibrium of abstract whole and representational parts. I have been focusing on this problem throughout my entire professional career. This creative process was thoroughly analyzed in my multimedia videos the incorporation of my paintings, sculptures, poetry, and musical compositions into complete synthesis, the finalized whole. Sequence of my videos, starting from early watercolor paintings through neo-Renaissance, the analysis of constructivist potential in Renaissance art, through sentimental paintings evolving into my musical subjects, presented in the Requiem to the Song video, emulate Brett Winner's compositions of 1997, exploration of musical capacity of color, line, and form, have placed the final step to the keystone in this personal journey. The project, which I started to work on shortly before 1998, was called Tonal Paintings. The project evolved as a result of theoretical studies based on empirical sensations as well as on an objective comparison of sound and light waves in 2013. The video based on these studies was created in which I incorporated my artistic and musical ideas into a series of unified synthetic images. The video can be watched today on um, YouTube. Compositions tonal painting have prepared the way to my compositions, the bathers, baroque paintings, and religious paintings, as well as works of different media entitled the Aphrodite Temple. All are products of the 21st century. They are also presented on the same site. My strong belief, however, is that an artist should not ever stop his search for new ways of interpreting reality in order to fulfill his mission up to his fullest potential. So in addition to the tonal paintings, I worked on many other specific projects throughout my long creative career. The latest two, which I was interested in during the first decade of the, the 2000s, were my handmade books and the series of photo installations prepared for the International Conceptual Exhibition Alphabet of Art in collaboration with Yelena Yassin, which consequently took place in Moscow, St. Petersburg, Philadelphia, and other cities in Russia and the United States. This important project was finalized in my video installation, The Tip of the Iceberg can be seen on um, YouTube as well. I would like to conclude my statement by pointing out to the fact that any human life is limited by the time given to it by nature. This limited time has been in constant contradiction with unlimited time of eternity. And so every artist, in a way, tries to overcome this tragic factor and join the eternity by sending his creations to the unknown future as some kind of a battle with the message to a lucky future discoverer. And so, I believe that at any present moment we artists are functioning together to carry on an extended message from all our predecessors and at the same time 
we are all preparing some kind of collective spiritual base for our future successors. <laughs>